GameMaker has some functions that deal with the way instances move around. And this function starts with the word move. And then, after the underscore, a few other things, depending on which kind of function you're using. So I've got our player again, object move. And this is just a wall to collide with. There's absolutely no code in here. It's just visible, it's not even solid, it's just to collide with. So the first thing I want to show you is how much stuff is in here, but let's just go really simple. Okay, if you watched the motion functions video, you'll remember motion set. This asks for a direction and a speed, so I'm just saying pick a random direction in a circle from 0 to 359 degrees. So let's go anywhere at a speed of 6 pixels per step. That's just to start us off. I want this player to just move randomly, kind of like a ball in Pong. The reason for that is the first move function I want to show you is if I collide with the object wall. So if I collide with our wall, move bounce all. So this is a function that will cause the colliding object to bounce off of the collided object. If you know a little bit about trigonometry, you'll understand the angle at which it will deflect itself. This function only needs one argument, and it's true or false. And it's just whether or not you should use precise collision. If you have it as true, that means everything has to have precise collision boxes. That's, that's everything that's the colliding object and the collider, everything. It all has to be precise. We don't need that for this because we're using a box. There's nothing precise about a box. Totally fine. So I'm just going to set it to false. And let me show you what happens when I collide with the wall. We should bounce off of it. So yeah, here we go. As you can see, my players picked a random direction, started moving, and whenever it collides with the wall, there we go. It just bounces around. I've got the R key to reset the room just so we can see other angles. There we go. It just returns at a different angle. Quite simple. And then it can go off the screen. Now this function is move bounce all, but there's also move bounce solid, and the only difference is this function will check all other instances in the game, but move bounce solid will only check instances that are flagged as solid. See, this one wasn't. So I would have to use move bounce all. I have to bounce off of everything. Just as a tip, if you want an instance or an object to be solid, it's probably best that it doesn't move. Just the way GameMaker Collision works, you may come across issues if two moving objects are set as solid. Solid objects shouldn't move. Therefore, I could make this solid. That's fine. The next function I want to show you is in here, and it's called Move Contact All. Now for the purposes of this one, I'm going to turn off our motion set. We don't need this. But I still want to pick a random direction. So let's just say when I create my instance, my direction will equal, once again, some random direction. I just don't want the speed anymore. Now the reason for that is here I've got if I'm not place meeting x, y, object wall. We haven't talked about place meeting, but we have mentioned before that exclamation mark is not. So if I'm not meeting at a place, this place needs an x and y. I'm saying my x and y, right where I am, and the object will be the object wall. So if I'm not overlapping the object wall, do this code, which is move contact all. This will say move in a direction I'm just going to say move in the direction I'm already going, just whatever. And then a max distance. This function will look ahead, whatever your max distance is, in pixels. So my instance will look ahead six pixels in my direction and say, if I move there, will I collide with anything? And if not, It'll move six pixels to that spot, and it'll just keep doing that until it says, oh, no, I do see something that I'm going to collide with. And then instead of moving six pixels, it'll move as close as it can get. So here's what this looks like. So there we go. As you can see, every time I restart the room, 
There, my object is looking ahead six pixels and saying, hey, is there a collision that's going to happen? No? Okay, well then I'll move ahead. And it'll keep doing that and keep doing that as I reset the room. So now you kind of understand the point of why it's called move contact. It'll move until there's a contact. And then once there's a contact, it stops. There's one more thing about it I want to show you. If I change my max distance from 6 to negative 1, it'll choose the default maximum distance, which is 1,000 pixels. So it'll look ahead 1,000 pixels and say, hey, anywhere in that whole 1,000 pixel stretch, will I collide with anything? And if the answer is yes, it'll move as close to the contact point and then stop. And here's what that looks like. There, you probably didn't see it, but what happened is... The player started in the center of the room, looked a thousand pixels in his random direction, which happened to be this direction, and said, hey, am I going to collide with anything in that direction? It found the first collision point and stopped there. That's all it's doing. It's looking ahead a thousand pixels, and once it gets to the first collision point, it stops. So that's how move contact works, and it works with solid as well. I chose all, but you can say move contact solid, and then it'll only check for solid objects, passing through anything else like enemies or other players who are probably not solid. The next move function I want to show you is move outside. Back inside the same script I had, down here I've got move outside all. Once again, it can have all or solid. All means any instance that's in the room, and solid is only the ones flagged as solid. So what this little thing does, it says if place meeting, so that means right now, if, if where I am at my x and y, and I put all here, that's just script keyword that just checks for anything in the room, all instances. So rather than putting a specific object like object wall, I said anything. So if I'm currently colliding with, my sprite is overlapping, any other object, stop moving, and then run this little function, which is move outside, which will pull you outside of a collision. It kind of like corrects that if you don't want to be overlapping. So I said, move outside, and I'm supposed to pick a direction, and I said my current direction minus 180. So that's turn around, like go the other way, go back the way you came. And I'm going at a speed of six, which is what we had set up as our motion set speed, just to be consistent. So that's the max distance, it'll check six again. It's usually best to check for collisions at the same speed you're moving. Here's what it looks like though. I don't know how easy you're going to be able to see it, but what's happening is it's picking a random direction, and when it approaches anything it can collide with, it'll overlap it, reverse direction, and pop back out by six. Sometimes you'll see it overlap one of my walls, and then kind of like pull back a bit. There's this, this little bit of a jitter. That's how you know this particular script is working, because it says when we're overlapping, so you can see that step when they overlap. And right when that step happens, that like that frame you can see, move outside happens, and it pushes back in the direction I told it to go. I told it to go the opposite direction. And that's that's what it's doing. So if you ever have things that aren't supposed to collide, if you do like random spawn generators, you can use this particular function, move outside all or move outside solid, and then pick a direction, just so things don't overlap. The next function is move random. And for this, I'm going to turn off my motion set. Down here, I've got the event press space. Whenever I press the space bar, the action is move random. Inside, I'm going to stop moving just in case I had motion set on. And then I'm going to call move random. Move random will move the instance anywhere within the boundaries of the room at certain intervals, at certain horizontal snaps and vertical snaps. So that means that the X and Y position of this instance, whenever it moves to a random location, is going to be divisible by 64 on my X axis and 64 on my Y axis, my H and V, horizontal and vertical. So I'll show you what that looks like. So there we go. Every time I press the space bar, the player jumps to some random location within the boundaries of the room 
snapping to 64 by 64. Now, of course, those are just two numbers I've chosen. You can input any number you want. You can actually just put the number 1 and the number 1, and then it'll pick any spot in your room, really. So you could use this to spawn random things, random enemies, random environmental hazards, whatever you want to do. You just say, hey, move random, and then set your snap, your horizontal and vertical snap, and then it picks a random spot. The beautiful thing about this function is it's constrained to your room size. It won't just like veer off somewhere outside of your room. It will always stay within your room very nicely. The next function I want to show you is move snap. This also has a snap to it. Now I've done something kind of complicated to show off just one simple function. And I guess I'll explain the whole process for you so you can understand what I've done. I've got a variable here called click and it's set to false. Anytime I left press on my object, on my instance, I run this code here that says, if clicked is not true, if not clicked, set it to true. Okay, so that's easy. So I click on my object, and now clicked is true. And then I've got in the end step, snap after declick. So this says, if clicked is true, and I'm currently holding the left mouse button, then my X and Y will follow the X and Y of the mouse. And then whenever I release the left click, click goes back to false. But here's the important part, move snap. Once again, this has a horizontal and vertical snap, obviously with the name like snap. What this does in this particular case is whenever I release the left mouse button, GameMaker checks the current position of this instance and says, hey, is it divisible by 64, both on the X and Y? And if it's not, it finds the nearest position that is divisible by 64. So, this instance, after I pick it up, drag it around, and drop it somewhere, will snap to a grid of 64 and 64. Here's what this looks like. So I can come over here, and I can click on my object and pick them up. I can click on this instance. See, I can drag them around, that's not a problem. And then, if I let go, there, it's snapped to the nearest 64. Now we know the edges of these boxes, or at least I know, are actually right on my 64 by 64 grid. So that means we know that if I try to drop it here, there we go, it's snapped to the nearest X and Y value, divisible by the H snap and V snap inside move snap. So you can do this for like puzzle games, you can do this for random spawns, you can do this for really whatever. If you just need something at some point in your game to snap to a grid, move snap is available for you. The next move function is move towards point. Now I've got a global right press setup. That means if I right click anywhere that's not on my instance, doesn't have to be, it's global, it'll run this code, which is move towards point which it's just the one function and it's really easy. Move towards point wants a coordinate, an X and a Y value somewhere in your room, and then the speed, which we've been using six pixels per step, so we'll keep with that. So whenever I right click somewhere on my screen, somewhere in the room, my instance will move towards that point. Okay, there's one small problem with this function is that when your instance finds that X and Y coordinate and moves towards it, it doesn't stop there. You actually have to tell it to stop or really do anything else. It can blow up or shoot in nine different directions. But you remember it's moving at a speed of six, so you have to, if you want it to stop, either have a collision or set that speed to zero. So here's what it would look like. I'm going to right click and it'll move towards my mouse. And that, there we go. That was it. It moved toward the mouse, and then it just keeps going. I didn't set up any reason for it to stop when it gets there. This function does not make the instance stop on its own. You need to code something in for what happens when it gets there. Like, I don't know, move snap maybe. That's one option. But I'll let you guys figure that out on your own. Let's move on. The last function I want to show you is really, really cool, and it doesn't really require you to do much. In the step event, I've got a function, 
move wrap that's it what this does is it wraps your object well the instance of your object whenever it reaches the boundary of your screen you need three arguments for this function you need to say whether or not you want the instance to wrap horizontally around the room and vertically around the room so I do in this case true and true if it goes outside the boundaries left or right that's horizontal I want it to wrap so if it goes out one side whoop, comes out the other same with the vertical then you have a margin how far out is your instance allowed to move past the boundary of your room before it wraps to the other side I've chosen the number 32 because that's the speed at which my instance moves if I chose a smaller number it would appear too soon and it'd be a little jarring and if I chose a larger number it would go at one side of the screen for a really long time before it came out the other side but enough explaining let's just see what that looks like now for the purposes of this particular demonstration I've got keyboard keys set up so I can move my little guy around now if you notice when I go at the right side of the screen there we go I pop back out on the left side so right here halfway through my sprite is 32 pixels if I set that margin to a lower number right now right when I hit this spot I would pop out the other side and I would pop out fully but that would look weird because half of me would disappear and then somehow I'd appear over here we want the full body to disappear right there's our margin and then there we go we emerge out the other side if you want to see what that looks like I'll show you some other numbers really quick let's set it to something really small like 8 okay so now when I move toward the screen see that once I've passed 8 outside of the screen past this past this here the margin is 8 this way once I've passed it I pop out here and see that 8 pixels of me is is disappeared it's behind here so that's our margin it's putting the 8 pixels here and the 8 pixels here and that just looks weird because it's not the size of my sprite and if I used a larger number I would disappear for a lot longer because it would have this invisible boundary outside this side it would wait until I hit it collide with it put me over here and that would I don't know it might look like it took too long and that's it for all the move functions now of course with all of the functions that I'm showing you I'm not showing you every single purpose for them and programming at least with video games is kind of like an art it's up to you to be creative and use functions on functions on functions and I really encourage you to play around with these don't try to like put it into your game immediately do these little setups like I did it's just one little sprite you know a couple walls play around with these functions and see what cool effects you can get